Imagine a force so powerful that it can change weather patterns around the world and even alter the fate of ancient civilizations. Earth's short-term weather patterns and long-term climate are influenced by a complex collection of factors. From our place in the solar system and the planet's rotation, to atmospheric patterns and seasonal changes. To further complicate things, every few years, our planet experiences El Niño and La Niña events, two opposite ends of a cycle that are part of the El Niño Southern Oscillation, or ENSO for short. Evidence of the ENSO goes back tens of thousands of years and may have even played a role in destabilizing some of the world's great ancient civilizations. One of the five strongest El Niño events ever recorded has finally come to an end as of June 2024. After months of record high ocean surface temperatures, unprecedented heat stress on coral reefs, drought in the Amazon rainforest, and extreme rainfall with dangerous consequences for North America. With La Niña predicted to begin in late 2024, or early 2025, what changes can we expect globally and locally? When our Earth experiences average conditions, we call those periods ENSO neutral. But every few years, fluctuations in wind and ocean surface temperatures can signal the beginning of an El Nino or La Nina event and a departure from Earth's normal conditions. These events alter worldwide atmospheric patterns and are known to wreak havoc by contributing to extreme weather and environmental harm. Imagine we're on the International Space Station orbiting Earth. From here, we can see our planet's spherical shape, and as you might expect, sunlight affects the Earth's surface unevenly. More light and heat reaches Earth at the equator, where sunlight strikes most directly compared to the poles, where sunlight reaches our planet at a low angle. In the same way that a hot air balloon rises or hot steam rises over a pot of boiling water, the same thing happens along the equator. Direct sunlight warms up the air, and that hot, moist, low-pressure air rises up into the atmosphere. As the warm air gets higher, it begins to cool off and condense into clouds. This is why we see an abundance of tropical rainforests close to the equator. More warm air continues to rise, pushing the cooler air away from the equator and out towards the north and south, where it will eventually sink back down to the surface. Then, that cool air will move from higher pressure along the surface of the Earth back to lower pressure near the equator to start the cycle all over again and complete what we call Hadley cell rotation. But how does this worldwide circulation of air, driven by the sun, relate to El Niño and La Niña events? The surface winds created by these Hadley cells are deflected towards the equator due to the Earth's rotation, a phenomenon we call the Coriolis effect. It's this effect that creates the trade winds on either side of the equator, and it's changes to these trade winds that indicate when we will experience El Niño and La Niña events. Historically, the trade winds have been so reliable that sailors have used them to navigate the globe for centuries, hence the name trade winds. Chemical signatures of the ENSO stretch back tens of thousands of years in paleoclimate indicators like coral fossils, and we have written records of the ENSO as far back as the 1500s. El Nino events may have aided Spain in their conquest of the Incan Empire in the 1500s and in the late 1700s, likely contributed to crop failures and unrest that sparked the French Revolution. Despite this long record of ENSO activity and the massive impact it has on worldwide weather and environments, it wasn't until the 20th century that we finally started to understand the mechanisms behind it. The first defining breakthrough came in the 1920s, when a British scientist named Sir Gilbert Thomas Walker set out to better understand the strength of monsoons in India. In his search for a way to predict monsoon strength, he ended up documenting the Southern Oscillation, a repeating shift in air pressure that happens across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. This oscillation was part of another large-scale air circulation that had not been documented before 
and was later named the Walker Circulation. Remember how I said that Hadley cells circulate air north and south? The Walker Circulation is just like Hadley cells, except instead of moving air north and south, the Walker Circulation moves air to the east and west over the equatorial Pacific. And instead of being driven by sunlight, the Walker Circulation is guided by the easterly trade winds and ocean temperature. It would be 60 more years before scientists were able to connect these changes in air pressure over the Pacific with the alternating pattern of warm and cool surface water in the Pacific. Combined, these make up what we now know as the El Nino Southern Oscillation ENSO. El Nino refers to the changes in sea surface temperature, and the Southern Oscillation refers to the simultaneous changes in air pressure. Unlike Hadley cells that reliably move air north and south, the equatorial walker circulation is not consistent and can experience colossal shifts as part of the southern oscillation. Every few years, the surface temperature and trade winds over the Pacific experience fluctuations, signaling an oncoming shift in the walker circulation. In turn, these shifts, which we refer to as El Nino or La Nina events, can upset the balance of weather and ecosystems over the entire Earth. So what happens to the Earth during each of these? During neutral ENSO periods, the sea surface temperature and trade winds are near average conditions. Trade winds blow across the Pacific Ocean, guiding warm surface waters to travel west from South America towards Australia and Asia. As that warm surface water moves west, it makes way for deep, cooler waters to rise up in its place. This ocean circulation brings nutrient-rich cool water to the surface in a process called upwelling, where it feeds phytoplankton and in turn supports other parts of the ecosystem like fish. In neutral periods, weather across the world occurs more or less as expected. This can include normal hurricane development in the Atlantic and average monsoon rainfall across Southeast Asia. Walker circulation drives columns of warm, moist air to rise above Southern Asia, Northern South America, and Middle Africa. So it's no coincidence that these three regions are where we see a concentration of vast, lush rainforests. The influence of this equatorial airflow is vast, so it's easy to imagine how changes to this system could cause a ripple effect around the world. The first signs of trouble are when the trade winds begin to weaken, and sea surface temperature rises in the Pacific, which can indicate an oncoming El Nino event, like the one we experienced in 2023 and 2024. During El Nino, the colossal columns of warm air that rise above our world's rainforests are shifted to the east or west. This change disrupts Asia's monsoon season with prolonged droughts and water scarcity and affects the livelihoods of billions of people in East Asia. The last El Nino also brought nine atmospheric rivers to the western United States that led to major transportation issues, dangerous landslides, and flooding. You can think of an atmospheric river like a river of moisture streaming through the air. When these atmospheric rivers reach land, they release all of that moisture, causing monumental precipitation. Everywhere on Earth, this shift in walker circulation is felt during El Nino. However, the changes you experience in your local weather conditions may be completely different from the changes another person sees in their local weather elsewhere on our planet. El Nino typically brings a reversal of the normal conditions for a given area. This is why places like East Asia or the Amazon rainforest, which typically get plenty of rain, will experience drought during an El Nino event, or why usually dry climates like Western North America will experience tremendous rainfall events. The recent El Nino event was also responsible for worldwide shipping delays in 2023, as there wasn't enough water to feed the Panama Canal, which relies on consistent rainfall to accommodate all of the cargo ships hoping to pass through. El Nino is described as the warm part of the Enso cycle, because Pacific sea surface temperatures are higher than average during this time. In addition to changing worldwide weather patterns, 
This also negatively affects ecosystems. Take, for example, coral reefs. They rely on particular sea surface temperatures to survive and support some of the most important and biologically diverse life on Earth. Corals have a symbiotic relationship with algae, but an increase in water temperatures can cause the coral to expel this algae, leaving it drained of color and vulnerable. A reef can recover from this bleaching if conditions improve in time, but their risk of dying is high, and the last El Nino event was no exception as part of the fourth worldwide mass bleaching event in recorded history. He warmer Pacific waters and weakened trade winds from El Nino also caused the upwelling of cooler, nutrient-rich water to temporarily slow or stop, leading to a dire situation where less phytoplankton means large numbers of fish must migrate or perish. As you can imagine, this ripples across the food chain and can impact other animals. The last El Nino event was responsible for a tragic number of dead sea lions and dolphins that washed ashore on California beaches because there weren't enough fish for these animals to feed on. Now that we've discussed what it's like during a neutral ENSO period and the destructive changes that can happen with El Nino conditions like we saw in 2023 and 2024, what can we expect from this upcoming La Nina phenomenon? La Nina is the other extreme. This period is marked by stronger than usual trade winds and cooler than average Pacific sea surface temperatures. While El Nino usually causes the reversal of neutral conditions, the best way to understand La Nina is to think of it as a more intense version of neutral conditions for most parts of the world, with a few exceptions. During La Nina, the neutral columns of rising warm air above South Asia and eastern North America become more pronounced, while the typical column of warm air above Africa reverses. Just as your experience of El Nino is highly dependent on where you are located, the same is also true of La Nina. As of August 2024, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration predicts a 66% chance that La Nina will develop between September to November of 2024 and a 74% chance it will last well into the Northern Hemisphere's winter of 2025. And as of this video, models are predicting a roughly 50% chance that this La Nina event will peak at a moderate strength. However, while forecasts for a La Nina event happening are usually correct, the predicted strength for these events will likely change from month to month. A strong El Nino ending in 2024 does not necessarily mean the upcoming La Nina will be as extreme. Sometimes a strong El Nino leads into a strong La Nina, but other times a strong El Nino is followed by a weak La Nina. With only 10 times in the historical record where the ENSO has changed between El Nino and La Nina within a one-year time period, as is expected with this year's switch, there just isn't enough historical data to draw many conclusions. Besides, scientists warn that the strength of an ENSO event does not always line up with the severity of its impacts. So, what do we know about the upcoming La Nina? For the northern part of North America, La Nina brings with it a colder, wetter winter, while the southern part of the continent might experience a warmer and drier winter. Notably, La Nina will increase the likelihood of a more active hurricane season in the Atlantic, with the potential for more and stronger hurricanes. For East Asia and Australia, this typically means a significant increase in rainfall, while in Africa, La Nina can mean some areas to the west are wetter, while Eastern Africa tends to experience more drought. The connection between ENSO and Europe isn't quite as clear, since the continent is farther from the source but La Nina is expected to bring lower than average temperatures to Central and Western Europe, with less precipitation across the mainland this winter and more precipitation to the North and South. There's one final thing we need to talk about when it comes to La Nina predictions. The El Nino and La Nina extremes of the ENSO have been happening for millennia, but what's less certain is how global warming from climate change will impact this cycle. While we see short-term, localized temperature swings from ENSO, 
the all-over trend of global warming continues on an upward trajectory, this means we are entering uncharted territory. There's clear evidence that as our planet continues to warm from climate change, the occurrence of severe weather will escalate. But the ENSO is a complicated worldwide and in many ways still an unpredictable phenomenon. Just in recent history, El Nino and La Nina events have become stronger and more frequent, leading to more droughts, floods, heat waves, wildfires, and severe storms, like we saw during the last La Nina event that lasted for three years. Exactly how global warming may impact the ENSO cycle is unclear, but we do know that climate change is likely to amplify that too. The approaching La Nina will undoubtedly teach us more about our planet's climate. Let's hope we are paying attention and use these lessons to adapt and prepare for our future in sustainable ways. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you like the video so you never miss out our next video.